Hi, this is Hillary with Barbell Acres, and today we're bringing to you a couple different things. Um, a mini garden tour, potentially a potato harvest, and then a little tra chicken tractor tour. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this video. This is the coop over here, and then this is the tractor that my husband built. Um, we have 11 birds, 11 chickens. Potato patch. They were much bigger, and then they recently went down, which I believe is, means it's ready to be harvested. All right, I'm gonna start digging one up at a time. Why don't we start over here? Because these were have like died the most, basically. Yeah, I think so now. The weeds have gotten pretty bad in here. It wasn't it didn't used to be this bad. I swear. While he's doing that, this is our other main garden, I guess. So this has been so many mishaps with this this year. This is my first year really like successfully doing it. And I put successful in quotes, but um, you can see uh, basically squash has completely taken over. These are spaghetti, I believe, coming out. Zucchini is in there somewhere, but I'm just I'm blown away at how just they would just exploded. I mean. But yeah, they're so cute. They kind of grew onto the chicken wire that my husband had to put around because my dog was going in and our chickens would sometimes go in if they were free range. So. But yeah, the squash is just like going crazy. I don't even know what to do with it. I have so much zucchini that kind of you didn't see, but it's in there. Um, and then there's the cutest little Watermelon. Look how dear it is. And it's just so precious. This is late. This is July, what, 17th, 18th? So, this is. Watermelon's gonna be late, but it's okay. Kinda had some mishaps, so. I don't think this is 100% the way you should be doing this, but I think you should have like a little pick, but we're just going with it. Anything? The idea is it should all be like kind of cluttered up underneath this. You kind of have to like pull out this clod and then like, yeah, there. There, yeah, look. It's a tiny one. These are tiny. Look, kiddo. Little babies. Hey, take these, put them in my cart, please. Can you do that? The potatoes, Chandler. They are cute. <laughs> Do you want to hold it? It's so funny! You want to hold it? No, that's okay. You don't have to. Yeah, they're so good for the earth. Yeah, you just kind of have to like go through and basically like wash off the dirt and like sift through. You're like panning for gold for them, basically. Is that all? That one, though? I mean... Hey. Oh no, there's more! Right there! Oh, hey, 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 hey. What? Here's more, look at that. I was gonna say, that's weird. It said you get like, what, six or eight per plant or something like that? Yeah, I thought so. Maybe that just didn't dig over far enough. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell where. That's cool. Yeah, well, can you yeah, wheel that over that's here? That's a good idea, Chan. Take your time. And there wouldn't be any more with like the root or anything. I don't. Is it too heavy? 
I can help you in a second. Yeah, I think this is kind of why they recommend like a pitchfork. So you can sort of like sift through a little bit. I'll dig a little deeper, but I think they probably would have just grown like out, not down, with how small those ones on the bottom were. They'll be okay. Are you stepping on the worms? I'm not stepping on the worms. Did you dig up them? Yeah, this isn't a potato, that's something different. I don't think. Unless you think we should just leave them go more and... and they look like they're ready. You know? I mean... Yeah, they're just so cute. A little explanation, um, we decided to let the potato patch go for another few weeks. Um, the potatoes that we harvested, I think we pulled up two or three plants, uh, were just really, really small um, and green looking. And so we're gonna try in probably like, yeah, three weeks to harvest the rest of them and see the return that we get. Um, but my husband is going to explain a little bit. He's the one that built our chicken tractor. Um, so we move them from the coop, um, move them to the coop at night, they sleep there, and then we move them to the tractor during the day. And they're pretty good about going back and forth um, on their own. Sometimes in the summer, thus far, we've had to chase them a little bit to get them back into the coop at night just because they want to free range. But for the most part, um, they're pretty good about going back and forth. Um, we also have, we feed them, you know, so they know that they get food each time we move them. Um, but yeah, he's going to explain a little bit about the, the chicken tractor that he built, him and his dad. And yeah. So the tractor is an enclosure that we built uh, for the chickens that we have. The idea is that during the day, they have a place to scratch around in and uh, just kind of hang out without you know, worrying about you know, predators or it, it has some cover for shelter from rain or anything like that. Um, but it still gives them the ability to run around and scratch around. And the cool thing about it is it's uh, mobile. It actually uh, is built on wheels, so you don't destroy your yard um, with all the scratching they do. So I followed uh, this uh, plan here, uh, Stress-Free Chicken Tractor Plans by John Suskovich, for the design and build of our chicken tractor. And my dad helped me put it together. It took us probably about four hours or so, I would say. A lot of that was, you know, just figuring everything out. And the book lays out pretty clearly, step-by-step, uh, step how to do it. It gives you a whole list of materials you're gonna need and, you know, step-by-step step instructions on how to make it. So that was helpful. But uh, what I did was I got a list in here. I wrote it down and took it to my local hardware store and handed it to someone and had him, you know, get all the materials together for me. Of course, I mean, you can just do it yourself too. Uh, but saved some time and then with chickens in general and forming habits, they do have uh, a little bit of a learning period where they have to adjust to routine. But once they form that routine, they get pretty good at doing it. And what we've actually found is that with the seasons changing, their schedule kind of changes, which makes sense. It's natural, but like right now we're in the summer and so it's not getting dark till later at night. So they don't want to go to their coop till later at night. So if we try to let them out too early, like right in like say like seven o'clock at night, they'll just 
kind of run around the yard and then we have to grab them and you know actually physically uh, move them and put them into the coop which the, the ideal scenario is they just go and hop up on their own which they will do if they think it's dark enough outside but that here is closer to 8 8 15 at night something like that um so yeah the the tractor's been super helpful uh, the hardest thing is probably moving it around just because it is heavy you're using you know full on wood and I do recommend, the book even says about getting pressure treated lumber, and that's definitely a key with uh, you know, being exposed to the rain and things like that. You don't want your wood absorbing all the water and then it starts to warp. For the door on ours, I just used standard lumber and it's fine, but when it rains, it does swell up and so that makes it hard to close and things like that. But it is heavy, um, probably should be moved with two people. I can move it myself, but it's <laughs> probably not the best way to do it. What they'll do is they'll kind of scratch around the base of the tractor during the day and eventually they scratch like a hole big enough where they can kind of squeeze out and also with just the the layout of our yard it's you know it's not perfectly flat there's some bumps and some ditches and things like that so we've had a few squeeze out and we've actually had uh, some encounters with the hawk unfortunately where we lost i think right now it's three birds predators like that once they kind of key into you have something in your yard they're going to kind of keep circling back so we went and got some uh, just stand-up owls that sit in our yard and that's a uh, predatory deterrent. All right guys, that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, it's a little bit different, but um, yeah, just kind of a little tour of our garden. Um, we've had a lot of mishaps throughout the year. We started to plant, I think at the end of March, April. Um, we're kind of around Lancaster County area and Pennsylvania. And <clears throat> yeah, we had a lot of grass seeds grow. Um, in our garden, so we ended up having to pull everything up. Uh, wasted kind of a lot of money because we got a lot of topsoil um, or bags of soil um, in compost that we bought. But yeah, we ended up still planting um, some of our zucchini, kind of replanting them, and they kind of took off. So we, I think I overplanted a little bit, I've learned. Um, I did buy a watermelon plant, I believe, yeah. Um, and so yeah. It, it ended up being okay. We, we're definitely getting a zucchini and a harvest from our squash, so that's good. And we'll see if watermelon comes through. Um, I didn't get peppers this year. I didn't get any herbs, but that's great. I'm, had a lot, I learned a lot, and then we'll, of course, get our potatoes, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, if you have any tips about gardening or potatoes or anything, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm very, very new to gardening, uh, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it thus far. All right. Thanks, guys.